And thank you, Corey, and welcome everybody to the to the webinar. I'm Walter Allen. I'm senior account executive from Sound Payments, and uh, this is actually our second webinar. We did one in January, and I think some of you were on the call uh, during that webinar. That one we took you through an introduction to Sound Payments and the solutions. So for this one, we're going to take a little bit different path. Talk a little bit about migrating from RMS. We have a lot of resellers and merchants that are looking to migrate from RMS to some of the other platforms, RMH, Dynamics, 365, Dynamics, AX. So I wanted to, to uh, give some general concepts and thoughts on that, as well as cover some other different areas about, um, about the industry and the solutions that we're going to be talking about. So the agenda for today, first of all, I'll just cover the target audience. I just want to make sure that that if you're on the call that we, we were covering, you know, the areas that you're looking for. Uh, and then a little bit about EMV, PCI, TLS, you know, what they really mean. And, and these are important concepts that are going on in the industry, especially for the small merchants. And uh, I just want to really kind of explain them and, and tie them into practical terms. Then uh, I'll get into the solutions that, that we're bringing to market and we brought to market and how that can shorten the path to RMS and, and, and EMV. And next, uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about our experience, an actual experience from a retail room reseller. And I've got some, some uh, slides on that. We actually have the reseller uh, had a conflict today, so he was uh, kind enough to give me the information. I'm gonna just kind of walk you through it, but as, as, uh, as we're recording this and you can pull down the information, you can, you can see uh, the slides themselves, but I'll kind of walk through his experience and then you can, and also I'll provide his contact information. So if you want to reach out to him, you can do that directly. Uh, and also a couple of new solutions that we're bringing to market uh, for accounting and payroll integration uh, for RMS. And then a couple of special offers that we have from Sound Payments. And then lastly, we'll do Q&A. And, and I'm going to try to leave enough time for Q&A or plenty of time for Q&A so that we can answer any questions that you have. So I'm going to kick right into it. So target market and audience, so the markets that we're focused on right now, US, Canada, and Mexico. And I know that on the first webinar, we had a lot of international people on the call and, and um, got a lot of questions on, can you uh, operate in Asia and this? So, so I just wanna make sure that the markets that, that uh, we're gonna be discussing here are clearly understood. And then the audience is uh, re resellers and retailers using the, uh, the following product, Retail Management Hero, uh, RMS, Dynamics AX, and Dynamics 365. So just real quick, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on sound payments because we did do that on the original webinar, but we're a technology company. We're focused on cl offering cloud-based business solutions. We're in several different industries, banking, healthcare, and, and including the payment industries. Um, one of the key things that we do is is we really focus on value uh, on our products. If we can't bring a product that offers value to both our, our partners and their customers, we don't bring it to market. So, so it's, it's, it's really kind of uh, our mantra uh, to, to bring value to, to, the, to the business. We're headquartered in Jacksonville, uh, regional offices throughout the US, and then we have R&D offices in the US, China, and Philippines. And then the last bullet is really just to let you know that you know, we, we bring solutions to the market, they're cloud-based solutions, but we're not all about having to do everything ourselves. We do partner with leading technology companies. Uh, I've got a few of them listed um, on the screen, but if we find solutions out there in the market that make sense, we'll partner up and add them to our cloud and bring them down to the market. And the last one is just really, I always put that on here that we're, and it, it gets confusing because a lot of our stuff sounds like a gateway or a processor, but we're not an ISO, we're not a gateway, and we're not a processor. So we don't compete with with those entities. We, we really do provide um, enablement for businesses to transact. So let me jump kind of into a, a couple of subjects. One is in, you know, why merchants need EMV to accept the EMV. And I've titled it that way. And as all of you know, the mandate's been out for a couple of years. A lot of companies have, have migrated, especially the larger one, but there's still a lot of smaller merchants that have not made the jump to EMV. 
and a lot of those are customers that that you deal with every day. So, so there's a there's a couple of things going on in the industry that 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 the merchants are getting hit with, whether they realize it or not, that are important. And if you're you're um, trying to convince merchants to to move off Mac Strike, to move off those older devices, uh, maybe they're running standalone to get integrated with with an EMV accepting device. Here's a couple of reasons of, of, of why it's important for merchants. And one is, is the increased chargebacks. The, uh, as you know, the merchants are liable now for the fraudulent, any fraudulent transactions if a chip card is run as a mag strike. That's the, that's the rule with, that the card brands have put on uh, to, move EM, you know, to move EMV into the mainstream. But what we're seeing, and we see it a lot, is those chargebacks are increasing for the merchants that have not migrated to EMV. So, so the you know the banks find any way they can do to make money, and and we're getting a lot of feedback from the industry that those chargebacks are, are increasing. The other one is the um, the downgraded transactions, and these are hard to see because unless you get the settlement reports from the processor and you know how to read them, and they're very confusing. Sometimes you can't even tell that that you're paying more for your processing, and and what happens is if you run uh, an MSR, even if it's a pin debit, we're seeing that they're typically downgrading those to signature debit, even though a pin is entered, uh, and so the merchant is paying higher processing fees. And the last is really customer convenience. You know, customers are they're all trained now to to, to insert their cards, and they really expect the system to accept it, and when they don't. It, it's confusing. Not only is it confusing, but it, it gets awkward when you've got to put tape or, or a piece of paper inside the slot because that's where people are going to put their cards. So, so these are the three things that outside of the mandates really are really solid reasons why merchants just need to get off Mac Stripe and get over to EMV. Another thing that uh, that is important now in the industry right now is 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 getting out of scope of PCI. And what that means is, is PCI, as you all know, is, is, a, is compliance regulations for any merchants that, that has card data going through their network, going through their point of sale. So the, the uh, PCI organizations and card brands put the merchants through all kinds of contortions to make sure that that data is secure. Um, so obviously if you can reduce the compliance requirements, it's going to save the merchant time and money. And one of the things that PCI has done is they've realized that if, if merchants are using standalone or even semi-integrated um, payment terminals and semi-integrated or really standalone devices um, with a connection to the, the POS, but there's no card data passing back and forth, they've actually come out with um, a new self-assessment questionnaire called the SAC B, and a SAC B IP is if it's yeah, if you have an IP um, device attached. And this SAQ is actually much much less onerous than the SAC Q C, which is this, what they would have to fill out if they didn't have a semi-integrated or standalone payment terminal. So, so this is a big plus for these. You know, if you can bring them a solution. That allows them to use a SAC IP, IP or a SAC B questionnaire. The other point is that um, <laughs> if they don't have any card data on their system, they cannot get hacked. You know, the payment terminals are secure; they're locked down. They've got proprietary operating systems. There's no viruses that can get into those systems. There, the the data is encrypted before it's sent to the processor or it's sent through any network. So. There, there's no way to hack those. So as long as the data, where they get hacked is when the when the data goes through their point of sale system, because they're going to run a Microsoft or or um, Android or, or other systems that can you know that that can get hacked. So by having a solution that does not send data through the merchant's uh, point of sale system, or, or or basically that's called an out of scope solution, they cannot get hacked. So they have the knowledge and the confidence that they don't have to worry about anybody getting in there and getting their card data. So the last one I wanted to cover, are, are kind of, these are all sort of related, is TLS. And TLS is the transport layer security. And that's really the protocol that's used for transmissions over the internet. SSL, you're probably familiar with that, you've heard that. For years, that was the way that data was encrypted to send secure data over the internet. Well, PCI has, 
has basically mandated that SSL is they're not accepting it anymore. And if, if you want to do transactions over the internet, you must use TLS 1.1 or higher. Uh, and they set a deadline, and that deadline is actually tomorrow um, for point of sale systems or payment terminals that are not using TLS 1.1 or higher. And we're already seeing some of the processors uh, stop accepting transactions. So we're getting calls, hey, my, you know, my processor stopped accepting transactions. What's going on? And we come to find out they've got a solution that doesn't support TLS, whether it's the operating system or, or whatever. So until they fix that, they can't run transactions, so they're panicking. So any merchant that falls into that category has got to find an alternate solution. So I'll go a little bit through, you know, I went through this before on our original webinar on, you know, what we bring to the table and how our system works. So, uh, and, and it's just easy to, to show it through this, this illustration. And really it's a, it's a semi-integrated cloud-based payment system. And it's for the, you know, it's for, we support a lot of different POS solutions and products, but for, for this audience, we're talking about the Microsoft and Retail Realm products. So, so we are integrated to RMS 2.0, RMH, Dynamics 365, and Dynamics AX. So no work has to be done to, to integrate our solution. But the way the solution works is the point of sale actually goes to our cloud and our cloud talks to the payment device, the payment device talks to the payment processor. That's a semi-integrated solution, but we've added the cloud components, so it allows us to offer a lot more functionality. But you get all the benefits of that semi-integrated solution. We're certified with uh, all the major processors because we leverage the payment terminals uh, certifications to those processors. Uh, support all the, the functionalities, EMV, NFC, DAVIT, EBT, everything that, that you can think of to run a payment transaction is supported. And also because we have uh, interface through the cloud, we can then add other services without impacting those cloud certifications. I'm going to talk about a couple of those today that I think will be of interest. And I can cover any questions that you have on the architecture or anything and when we get into the Q&A. So shortening the path to, you know, from our RMS and, 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 and to EMV. So, so with, with, the, with this solution, because it's the same solution that's supported across all the different platforms, you don't need to wait for RMH. And I know a lot of uh, resellers are kind of waiting for um, a couple of features on RMH to be completed, which are, 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 are coming out shortly um, or looking to, to you know, move to Dynamics or 365, which require other um, components to be put in place, you don't have to wait. You can drop the solution today on an RMS 2.0 system and migrate later. Everything that, 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 that is supported today, all the benefits you get from the, uh, the payment devices, the, the cloud-based point of sale, uh, cloud-based semi-integrated solution, everything carries over to the other system. So you don't have to swap out your devices, you don't have to change your config, nothing changes. So other than your, your point of sale, of course, um, you would have to migrate them from RMS to RMH uh, or Dynamics, but the payment piece of it all stays intact. So that's why we believe, you know, there's no need to wait. So that's kind of one of the themes of how you shorten from RMS to, to one of the other platforms. And, and the benefits really are um, a little bit of what I talked about, those those three items that merchants run into, you get the EMV solution. It's out of scope for PCI uh, PA DSS, and it supports uh, the TLS protocols. So, so you're immediately covered. You solve all those items. So the merchant doesn't have to worry about any of those. Uh, another thing that that um, uh, uh, that our model, our architect brings to the table is because we support all the different processors. We're not a gateway. We're not locking you into one processor or another. Uh, they don't need to change their acquiring relationship. They use Vanta today, they can use Vanta tomorrow. If it's first data, if it's if it's thesis, it doesn't matter. They can keep it or they can change it. It's really up to them, but there's no requirement to change. The solution is very, very fast. And I'll I'll um I'll talk a little bit about that when I go through some of the um experiences of uh, one of the retail realm resellers. But because of the internet, because of the speeds of the internet, 
uh, it's 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 blazingly fast. And and one of the nice things is you can support any device on any point of sale system. If it's a mobile device uh, and you want to use that to walk around the location, you want to go curbside checking, whatever it is, or or one that's that's directly on a countertop. It doesn't matter. You can drop any devices on there. It's just a configuration, and you pair it up. So, so we make it really easy to 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 support whatever solution you want. And then, because we have that cloud connection, and we have information on what's going on with with the transactions, we don't have card data, but we have all the other information. Uh, we can do centralized reporting by store or chain. So, you have, if you're a franchisee and you have four stores, you can see all of your stores, uh, and also. One of the things that you have with, with semi-integrated solutions is you have to pair the point of sale with the payment device. And there can be problems with that with IP devices. IP devices, you know, lose their um, their their IP address uh, constantly because that router can go up and down and the DHCP, they'll just change it. It's no big deal. But then the point of sale loses its pairing. With our cloud, because we're paired in the cloud, that never happens. So, Things like that are just um, problem solvers and just make the system much more attractive and, and for, for use and you get less problems of your merchants calling up and say, hey, my device, I can't, my POS doesn't see my device anymore. Uh, and then uh, the additional thing is is what I talked about, that, that we have uh, cloud services that we bring to the table uh, that don't impact the, uh, or are outside the interface to the to the point of sale. Uh, recurring billing, third-party financing, and even payroll and accounting integration, which I'll talk a little bit about uh, in some of the the following slides. So, so there's a lot of reasons to to move now um, to these types of solutions, and especially our solution. And you don't need to wait. You don't need to wait for for RMH or, or Dynamics to to take advantage. Just real quickly, uh, uh, and again, I covered this before, but uh, the services are, are everything's included, and we have a month. It's it's based on a monthly subscription fee that resellers can can mark up and 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 take advantage of recurring revenue. So the payment terminal is included. Uh, Pax we support their whole family today, and Genico we're actually adding in Q4. So I've got a slide on some of the products there, but that's exciting news for us because Genico is coming out with a brand new uh, family of products that they call Tetra. Uh, and they're really exciting products, and we'll be supporting that family. And, and the rest of it is, you know, what you get: the licenses, the plugins. We we have 24/7 support. Any software update, as as the card brands and the processors uh, make changes and requirements to EMV, those just carry along. You don't have to do anything. Um, there's just a, a, a automatic download to the to the device to get the new changes. No changes on the point of sale side, no EMV certs, nothing. So it's very, very simple, very hands off. And then we also op op offer an optional overnight equipment exchange. If you want a spare in the air type of, of, of support, if you're, if it's that mission critical, we can, we can, uh, we can support that overnight e equipment exchange. So as I mentioned, the uh, on the terminal devices. Uh, I have a couple pictures of them here, you can see, but uh, we we, the, we have the entire family of packs, and they have you know multiple different devices, Android devices, when you know um, Linux devices, mobile devices, you, you name it, they've got it. It's a very 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 rich family of devices. Uh, the the pictures on the right are the new Ingenico Tetra line, and and I don't know if they're Calling them Tetra, Tetra is their their operating system. Uh, they, I believe the units are called the Move 5000, the Lane 5000. There's a Lane 7000. So there's some some uh, uh, the naming of the models, but you can kind of see the pictures of them. And there's some very 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 nice devices that Ingenico is bringing out to the market, and we'll be supporting those as well. So uh, so that's exciting news. It gives gives you guys some options uh, if your customers want. An Ingenico device, it doesn't matter, you know, for us, for you, for you, it's just that you click, you know, you just, okay, I want an Ingenico, click on the Ingenico device. It's, there's no changes to the software or anything like that. Um, so it's very, very seamless. So uh, just the other things, um, you know, we, we have a one-time deployment fee covers getting it all ready. So when that device shows up at your merchant's locations, it's out of the box ready. They plug it into the internet and they, um, configure the 
the point of sale system and, and they're up and running. And then we've set it up so that after 24 months, the merchant can actually upgrade to a new device. As you know, these devices have a shelf life. They last a long time. They'll, they'll last seven or eight years, but the, the models change pretty much every 12 months. These manufacturers are coming out with new cool devices and, um, and merchants want to take advantage of them. They, they really don't want to, you know, wait that five to seven years. So we give them the ability to upgrade after 24 months. So that, that's kind of an attractive option. So, uh, and any questions on that, like I said, we can, we'll answer that. And I've got information on all the contacts so you can, you can reach out to us directly. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some firsthand experience. And, and uh, so Mike Menden, for managing partner for ASDIS Retail, he actually was going to be on this call. He had a last minute conflict come up. He apologized. He um, he he did send me some uh, answers to questions, kind of because we had asked him some questions to cover on on the on the webinar. So he sent us his answers, and I I put them on the slides, and I I, I left them verbatim. So it's it's Mike's answers. I didn't edit them or anything. You, you can you can see what what his thoughts and and and, um, and and experiences are. But he also said that he was willing to talk to any of the resellers or retailers that want to learn more about you know his experiences with sound payments and answer any questions. So I've got his, his email address here. Um, if you want a, a, a contact, a phone number, you can reach out to me and I can, I can uh, get that from Mike. So I won't read through all of these. Uh, I know we're recording this and you'll be able to see the screens uh, on the record when you when you log on to the um, when you jump on the, the retail realm website. Uh, but but overall I'll just kind of give give some summary. Uh, he did install uh, our stuff on RMS 2.0 with uh, both a PAX 300 and a PX5. So he had two different devices. His his only comment was that they both work great but the px5 offers a path through ethernet port and a larger screen which it which it does we we did ask him to you know why did you choose to work with this and we didn't know what he's going to say and he kind of went through and you know some different reasons talked a little bit about his experience with with some of the other vendors and there's some other great solutions out there uh, that you can get and he just kind of compares us with them uh, and you can kind of read through and and, and see what his thoughts and reasons are. What his his main ones that I can see are are um, it's, we're, we're we're very inexpensive and we've made it that way because we want to get our solutions out into the market. No gateway fees um, and the and because we you know combine the equipment with the subscription, the overall cost is very low. And the other thing is he would he was very. Um, uh, interested in the fact that we supported multiple processes so he wasn't locked into any one single one processor and and really those are the those are the advantages that we push out in the market we asked him a little bit about you know how is easy it is or difficult to to work with us and he uh he kind of walks through that uh, obviously we, we we try to make it very easy uh the plugins from retail realm are similar to the other plugins so they're easy to use Talks a little bit about documentation. Looks like we we probably can do a little better job there, and and we you know we we take this seriously, so we'll make sure that the documentation is uh, makes it very easy to use it. And um, you know the initial few that we hit, and Mike was one of the first ones that actually installed. So any first time installers, you're gonna hit a couple of things. Uh, most of them were, were we saw very quickly, and we did very. And very supportively with retail realm. Um, you know, we're not a retail realm reseller, so the the reseller does need to open a case. Uh, but we worked with retail realm, got these issues solved very quickly. There's no finger pointing, so it worked very very well. And and once these issues are resolved, and some of them are just configuration issues on RMS that we you know didn't have documented mainly. Uh, so now we 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 know that, so we won't run into them before. But the nice thing is that um, the experience for for Mike will, was pleasant. He wasn't getting stuck in the middle, and that's not that's what we didn't want to happen. We didn't want finger pointing and the the reseller or the retailer getting getting caught in the middle. And then we asked him how well it's been working. 
the you know once we got through these first couple of configuration issues there really hasn't been uh, any support calls so everything seems to be working pretty good customers he went from a max stripe solution to the semi integrated so it's different um you know you got a payment terminal the payment terminal sits in front of the customer the customer slides his card very different from the way they were operating before so it took them a little bit to get used to it but now that they're used to it they um like he says they they seem happy with the process and that's the the main thing that the merchant likes it and then just uh we did ask him if he had any additional stuff or feedback and and um uh, pretty much most of the questions came in initially uh, and then once they got used to using it they seem to uh, be happy with the way everything works so so that's kind of an experience. Uh, I would have preferred Mike to, to talk about it rather than you hearing it from me, but I didn't edit any of these answers, so they are his, and uh, you can you know look through them. And again, I'm I'm happy to um, to introduce you to Mike, and and you can feel free to reach out to Mike and, and talk about any of uh, of his experiences. So let's go to uh, the next section before I get into the offers. And, and these are two things that um, because we have a cloud-based solution, we actually have uh, some additional plugins for RMS. Now, right now they're RMS 2.0, where we'll be talking to Retail Realm about integrating them into RMH and the other platforms. But right now it's 2.0, but there's two of them. One is for accounting and one is for payroll and what they are is automatically populating accounting data directly into the may the, the common accounting and payroll platforms and we're hearing out in the industry from from merchants that that use these platforms is this is something that is very attractive to them and the reason is it it uh, for a number of reasons it, it uh, you know Today, it's usually a manual process. Most point of sale systems don't support direct populating of the accounting information into these accounting plat packages. So they have to do it manually. They have to take the Z reports out of the point of sale system and manually uh, send them, you know, send them over to the accounting people. The, uh, the accounting people put them into the, the accounting packages. So it's very manual labor intensive. There's, it opens a possibility for data errors. There's security issues. They got to transfer files through email. So, um, so there's a better way to do it. And and one of those is to automatically populate. Now, all of these platforms allow you to to do that, but there's development involved. So what we've done is we've actually partnered up out in the industry, and this is where the partners come in to play, and the way we bring technology to market to offer um, two solutions. One is PO accounting and one is payroll. And the, and the and, and basically the way it works is, is RMS has a plugin that automatically will populate, you know, and I'll give you a list of the different accounting packages and payroll packages that are supported to populate these uh, these packages. And there's, uh, so there's, and typically what we do with a point with this these products are the, the the point of sale has to do an integration number one and then number two it's just a mapping of accounts to the accounting package that's still the mapping part still has to happen that's where the accounting comes in we we can take you through how that works very simple um the hard part is the the integration but that's already done because we already have a plugin for two for rms 2.0 so we can give you, I can get you more information on, on this solution. The, you know, the, the, it still works on a subscription base. It is a separate one from the, uh, the, the semi-integrated payments. So they, they can pick one or all. Uh, so we have bundle pricing, we have separated pricing. But some of the real features are, you know, really the, the reduced time and also the, you know, real-time access. So in, in, uh, in the manual, process that typically a lot of them are doing today you know they'll put it in the accounting systems when they get around to it so they may do it once a month they may do it once a week this happens every day because it's automatic so they have actual real-time access to they can look in their accounting platform to see what's been sold the inventory the sales taxes all that information is there the next day so it's a huge advantage um, and again because we're sending information through the point of sale directly into these platforms, 
that data is secure. It's not going to, uh, uh, you know, sent out in a batch. It's not sent to a file through email where anybody can get get a hold of it. It's very very secure. So a lot of advantages to this solution. I think this is something that that um, once you get a little bit better understanding of of what it is and the value, is something that's going to be very attractive to to your merchants and retailers that uh, that are using RMS 2.0 and then looking to migrate to the other platforms. The other one is payroll, uh, kind of same concept, except it's payroll information that goes um, automatically populated. And again, we've got plugins into RMS 2.0, into some uh, a lot of the major uh, payroll packages. The big difference between the payroll and the accounting is with the accounting, you know, you've when it's populated in a QuickBooks and whatever, it's accounting data, so you can look at it if, if for some reason the information was was wrong on the initial system and need to be changed, it's no big deal. You can go change it. It just, uh, it, it'll update QuickBooks the next day. With payroll, if you make, a uh, you know, an error in your payroll information, you've cut those checks. It's very difficult to get that money back. So you want to have some more control over that. So we actually have a lockdown period where the payroll managers can go in, look at the data that's been automa automatically sent through from the point of sale, make sure that it's all correct, and then click on, yep, go, and then we'll populate it into the, the payroll packages to cut the check. So that's the only real difference between the two, and then, and then of course, one's payroll, one's accounting. Same same idea, though, same contact, concept of, of you know, taking a manual process and automating it into an, auto, you know, an electronic process, so you get all those benefits. So those two uh, solutions, we're excited about bringing these to market, and um, and we'd like to get feedback on that. We can explain, you know, how they work a little bit more in depth. And uh, like I said, they're for RMS 2.0, but we do have plans to take those into the other products as well. So the software is sub, sub, uh, version supported. The packages you can kind of see all the all the main ones: QuickBooks, Zero, FreshBooks, Peachtree, NetSuite, Sage, Microsoft um, Dynamics. This, these are the accounting side of the, of those packages, and there are even uh, packages that are uh, supported in in other countries. And I don't know I'm listed here, but uh, we probably cover uh, about 90% of the of the major packages common packages that are out there and if you happen to hit one that we don't have we can easily add that so that pretty much is all i have for the the um the presentation and the uh, the information on the solutions and and the the the, the, the technical uh, aspects of it uh, any questions on that? We can we can take into a deeper dive. So now I want to talk a little bit about kind of the the, the offers that that we're offering, and and we actually have two of them. One is, and this was this was advertised in in the the um, the announcement that Retail Realm set out, and one is for webinar attendees only. So you actually have to be on this call <laughs> to get this one. Uh, so we did want to you know have something that if you took the time to attend the webinar. We wanted something special for you guys. So what we've done is uh, offer uh, for the first five subscriptions for the first 12 months, we're not going to bill you. So that's going to be free subscriptions. And in addition, we waive the one-time deployment fee. Um, and that's, a you know, I think it's a $45 fee for each of the devices. So so there's some savings that you have for, the, for your first five subscriptions. And anybody that's on this call will, will, can take advantage of that. But we did all, went ahead and we've 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 kind of added to the offer. This is for all resellers, and and really, you know, we see and we're already seeing this where we've resellers that are using the solution like it, so they tell their colleagues about it. So we and then their colleagues call us. So we want to um, reward the resellers for doing that, and so we put a referral program together and, and the way it works is very 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 simple we'll pay a, a bonus on the initial referral and then um, an additional bonus if that new reseller as soon as they sell their first subscription 
we'll pay that referral reseller an additional bonus and it's so for a total of 500. So you can see if you, you know, you can make some some pretty good coin if you just by referring um, some of your colleagues to us. And I put a little star here just because I wanted to make sure that that um, that I define enough about what would it will qualify for it because just sending us a name isn't enough. Uh, we actually want the name and contact. Uh, we need to confirm that it is a new reseller and they're not already signed up. And then the only thing we asked is you you host a, an introductory call, and, and all that means is 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 you schedule the call, we can send out the invite, um, and then you just do a warm intro, and then we'll take it from there and 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 pitch them on what we've got and take them through the product. So very simple to to get that referral bonus. The second one, obviously, they need to to sign up and and do something with it to get get the second half of it. But uh, we're, we're excited about this. We're already getting, the, like I said, we're already getting the referrals and we want to reward you for those. So, so that pretty much ends it. And again, we can, we can answer any questions. I'm going to leave on this screen here, which lists um, our three regional salespeople. I'm on there as well. You can reach out to any of us. All of us are experienced with the solution that I just went through, all the retail realm and Microsoft platforms. And, and you know we've, with the installations we've done, uh, so we can answer any questions that you have. So feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, we're, we're, I've kind of regionalized them, but it, um, but we we, we kind of cover nationally. It's it's even though it says Eastern, I can cover if, um, other geographies. But but please feel free to reach out to any three of us, and we can answer any questions. So Corey, uh, I think with that, I'm pretty much done if you want to take it back and I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions and then if i cannot answer them i will certainly get the answers and 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 get the information back as as quickly as possible 